Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We'll just wait to let everybody who's in the waiting room um, through to the call, and then we can officially start in the next minute. Um, Collins, you can just give us a heads up. Once everybody's in the room, then we can kick off. Okay, I think Liz, we can start off uh, because we already have uh, guys, uh, some are dropping, I think, uh, because of technicalities. No worries. Uh, we can start off, the rest will get us when we are already, uh, we've already started up here. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's um, one hour session. Uh, this is going to be like a teaser for the up, uh, towards the upcoming event that we're going to have later on in the year. Um, we're going to look basically around partnerships and generating new investments, opportunities and financing for the youth projects in Africa. Um, so this is literally the, what the one hour is going to be about. Um, so let's just start off to the first slide, please. And this is the question for the day. Um, so this one particular hour, we're just going to discuss one particular question, and that is how can partnerships support youth development in Africa? Um, yes, I know the, they're still controlling the slides. Just, just go all the way back to the first slide, no worries. Perfect, perfect. I like the fact that you've already given a snippet of how it's going to run down. Um, yes, so as mentioned, this is, this is today's session. We just have one hour, so we're trying to be as impactful as possible, and I'll be a bit stingy with the time, uh, so so sorry about that. Uh, my name is Miss Lizzie Otay, and I'll be your moderator for today, so we're going to have a lot of fun. I like it when we're talking about youth and anything youth-related, so super excited to moderate this particular session. Um, next slide, please. A few housekeeping rules. Uh, these are not set in stones, but just be on mute whenever you're um, not speaking. You can use your electronic hand. That should be on the reactions tab that's underneath on your, um, um, if you're using your laptop, uh, it's, it has the smiley faces and emojis icon. So you can find the electronic hand there and you can raise it. Please use the chat box to introduce yourself. We thrive when it comes to networking. So let people know who you are in the room. Um, we will meet you automatically, but don't worry. When we when we give you permission to speak while you want to ask a question or make a comment, you can feel free to unmute yourself. This session is purely 100% being run um, to, via English. Uh, we will have this recording shared to whoever would want us to share with them. So just please reach out to Collins later on. Um, we only have one hour. So as mentioned earlier on, while people were joining in, I will be a bit stingy. Uh, when it comes to the time. Um, so there will be pop-up polls um, as the session goes on, but feel free to introduce yourself, uh, make your comments already at the beginning. As I mentioned, we're just focusing on youth today and partnerships around um, that particular uh, cohort. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So this is the question we're going to address. So feel free if you already have ideas or any answer towards how can partnerships support youth development in Africa and foster a sustainable ecosystem for entrepreneurship and innovation. All through the session, please ponder on that um, and do put in your remarks if you already feel like you have a question and answer to that and a way forward. Now we'll give it back to uh, Kevin Skaumber. Um, he's going to get, take us through the welcome remarks. Um, Calvin is the Director of Marketing and Communications for Youth Initiative Development Program. I'm hoping, Calvin, that you're already on the call. Uh, if you can have your video. Perfect. I can see you. Good. So, Calvin, please, over to you. You can take us through the session. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Liz. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this forum. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm loud enough and clear enough for, for everybody. In case there are hitches, please let us know. And now I just want to give us a brief uh, uh, background about a youth initiative development project uh, program. Sorry, it's a non-profit organization that aims to inspire and empower vulnerable young people through various programs, including community building, promoting uh, volunteerism, promoting youth engagement, among others. A few areas of focus, as you as highlighted there, one area of focus is health. The other area of focus is uh, on poverty relief. Uh, another area of focus is education. 
ICT, which is a bit broad, and then sports and nurturing of uh, talent among the youth and the wider community. Now, uh, briefly, uh, the areas of focus, if you look at our slide, our presentation is very clear there. We do issues or uh, matters around sport and relief among the youth. This is a very broad uh, perspective that we have engaged in uh, and we continue to engage in. in. Sport is a key uh, element in the life of the youth. It's a, a very good um, avenue where youth uh, interact. They meet and from here we know how to disseminate whatever we wanted to disseminate. It's very key uh, uh, globally, locally and, and, and otherwise. And now another key area, the world now is moving very fast. We are in techno savvy in environment, we're in techno savvy uh, uh, world where everything is now online and on your phone, on your computer, on the, 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 the gadgets that we have. So we focus more on ICT. Amidst all these, there is a ICT uh, tag to everything that we do. We have education, very key, very central to our engagement. Youth health and well being. Today, we have a lot of issues uh, that surrounds. Um, health matters, uh, physical and mental well-being. We have issues uh, around there, and especially among the youth. Today, we have a few uh, diseases or ailments or, or deficiencies that are not only old age centered. Today, they even come and what affect the youth. So this is an area that we have a lot of focus in. So it's an area that um, is very key among uh, um, uh, 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 in the programs that we engage in. And uh, just last to, to, to mention, we, are, we hold a lot of stakeholder con, con, convenience. So we have uh, conferences, we have webinars that we hold so that we can bring both private and public sectors to talk about these issues, come up with measures that we can use to mitigate the crisis, the challenges, the problems affecting the youth. So we are all called together as a family that try to drive in one direction to alleviate the issues, the challenges that are affecting youth in the 21st century and also in 2023 going forward. I welcome you all and let's have a very interactive session. I hope you are going to benefit a lot from this going forward. Thank you very much. Let's move to the next slide. Now, ladies and gentlemen, briefly, this is going to be our program for the day. Like please mentioned, it's going to be a 90 minute program. And so we want to make it as interactive as insightful as possible, and let's all cooperate. Let's all uh, um, take part in this. Just have one minute or thirty seconds to go through. I may not read everything, but just go have one minute or so to interact with the program. Then we'll be able to move uh, together going forward. I want to thank you very much and welcome once again for this very very lively interactive session. And we hope you are going to come up with something positive out of it. Feel welcome. Thank you very much. And, and I like the fact that you highlighted how tech savvy uh, the youth are nowadays, especially in our country and across the world. Maybe just a few facts. Uh, we have 1.8 billion youth and adolescents, and this is ranging in between 10 to 25 years. But when we look at the sub-Saharan sub uh, region, we have 226 million adolescents, um, which also fall under the umbrella of youth and adolescents. Um, and in Kenya, we have 13 million adolescents, and this is looking at the age of, of 10 to 19 years. So we already have a lot of youth, not only globally, but within uh, Kenya as a, as a country of focus also. So then that means we have a lot of opportunities, a lot of challenges. Big numbers means we need to rethink the strategy that we used to have, because this is the only time in the history of mankind that the amount of youth and adolescents has been you know, in Masai. So there's a 1.8 billion campaign going on and we're trying to make their voices also be had. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, when we look at, when we talk about opportunities and challenges that we face, when you're dealing with young people, there's a lot of mental health and we've seen this through the pandemic um, because of in, inadequate resources, the fact that we don't have enough facilities to look at mental health challenges. And we do have one of our keynote who's going to kind of dive into that particular discussion. Um, and we know back, uh, back in Kenya, we already have a task force that has been set aside because the amount of, of suicide and, and mental health issues kind of skyrocketed during the pandemic. And we need to rethink when we're working with, of course, tech savvy um, individuals who 
you know, the first thing will be to Google it and find an answer for it. And we need to give them all the resources and all the help that they get, and we need to move them. So this calls for partnerships, this calls for redirecting, restructuring, and not thinking the way we used to think when we're handling the youth and the adolescents. And this means more resources because they're in large numbers now. Uh, but that those were just a few facts uh, for you to kind of think about while we're going on with the program. So we'll just go to the next slide. Um, where we're going to have uh, Gadoni Bogwa look at mental health issues. Uh, she's going to introduce herself because if I start reading her CV, I might not do justice. I'm, I'm also worried about pronouncing your last name because there's some sort of a oomph that I need to give to it. Uh, but Gadoni, please welcome. You have 10 minutes. As I mentioned, we really want it to be very impactful. We're talking about the youth. So over to you. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I thank you, Liz, for that. Um, I am a senior clinical psychologist by profession. Uh, I work in two big hospitals at the AAR Hospital on Kiambu Road and Chiromo Hospital Group. I'm absolutely pleased to be having um, an opportunity to talk today because one of the things that I'm really, really passionate about is wellness, you know, not just um, waiting for people to be sick, um, for us to engage in treatment, but also what is it that we can do on, on a space of prevention and promotion where mental health is concerned. And absolutely, with no doubt, as Liz has said, um, having um, just 30 million adolescents, I mean, the youth really make quite a huge portion of the community in Kenya. And this is also the bracket of people that are deeply um, afflicted by mental health. Let's look at a few uh, statistics. I would like to share something, if you can enable that. Um, but one of the things I want us to be able to, to see really objectively is when you're looking at mental illnesses, when we are looking at poor mental health, how that um, comes into play between individuals who have something to do in terms of employment, be it a job or entrepreneurship, and individuals who are not employed. Thank you for that. Um, I hope you can be able to see my slides very well. Yes, yes. Let me put that okay. on slide. Before I go to that, for anybody who is um, joining us this afternoon, this is Chiromo Hospital Group, as you can see there. Uh, we do have five facilities and just one other new facility, specifically looking uh, at wellness, a wellness center in Upper Hill. And we are guided by the vision, vision, and you can see uh, in your screens. And one thing that we are big on is the focus of recovery in dignity. So look at these um, statistics. So when you go to the UK Health Foundation, it shows that the unemployment um, rate was estimated at 5.1%. That was in January, 2021. And the highest rate was among the youth, 18 to 24 years old and people with lower qualifications as well. I want you to note that 43% of individuals who are unemployed suffer poor mental health. And let's look at that um, from a more critical space. When you look at this data representation, blue, we have the unemployed youth, and then red, we have employed. And I want to say employed, including the people who are running um, businesses as well. So look at um, anxiety. The rates of anxiety in comparison between the two demo, uh, groups of people, you can see that it's higher for people who are unemployed. Look at that for depression as well. When you're looking at loss of um, behavior, having behavioral issues, look at um, general positive effect. You can also be able to see that individuals who are employed have better general positive effect in life look at emotional the emotional ties you can be able to see that even though the numbers are quite low but people who are, are employed have better um, emotional ties if we were in another space of conversation i would be talking about um emotional unavailability you know and and how that looks like and why 
actually we have that life satisfaction when you're looking at life satisfaction as well you can see that it's higher among individuals who are unemployed psychological distress and we are talking about any crisis that individuals experience so the psychological distress is higher for those who are not engaged in um, any form of business or productivity for that matter when we look at the psychological well-being individuals who have something to do and and this is very critical for me because when you look at the rate of unemployment in this country as well then you'll find that it's also it's actually quite quite high so you can imagine the number of people who um don't score in the happiness index and then um looking at the happiness index score people who are employed people who have something to do more productive actually enjoy a better quality of life and i'll be telling you shortly why as we look at what exactly is this um, mental health but basically long story short we are seeing that these results showed high values of anxiety depression and loss of behavioral and emotional control is higher for unemployed group as compared to the employed group but what exactly is this mental health that you know we've been talking about i want you to note four key things we say that mental health is the overall well-being of an individual whereby the first thing that individual is able to realize their own potential secondly cope with daily life stressors i love this um part of the statement because it's always a reminder that stress is a part and parcel of life so if you're in a space um, where you feel that it will get to a point where you'll not experience a stressor you're already setting yourself up you know for disaster the difference between you and somebody who has a mental illness is how they're able to cope otherwise stress is just part and parcel the very important part of this key definition is to be able to be fruitful and productive that in itself heavily heavily emphasizes to us that being able to be in a position to do something being able to be in a position where you're able to use your skills then it actually is a big part of mental health at the end of the day do you feel fruitful and productive and are you going to be able to feel fruitful and productive if you're completely um, unengaged, you know, at, at, at all. So this is actually quite an important um, conversation this morning. And the last part is being able to make a positive contribution in the community. Why this is also very important. We are living in a day and age where we are less community uh, based because of urbanization there's a lot of individualism and what i want to emphasize on today even if you're able to cope with your daily life stressors even if you're the best self even if you have you know a good booming business investment you're employed and you are isolated you will still suffer poor mental health and it is a poor mental health when it's not properly addressed that triggers mental illnesses um, eventually at the end of the day so what is what are some of the benefits number one we are seeing that being able to be productive cushions against distress related psychosocial problems hence reducing crime we are also seeing that mood disorders depression and anxiety they are prevented as a translation of investment the use of substances is also reduced use of substances is usually comes in even though initially starts at a point of curiosity the dependence comes in where somebody feels completely hopeless going on we are trying to just to adapt to the situation so that is also reduced as well the activity and uh, fruitfulness of the youth translates to diminished problems of irritability and conduct issues so this is also very important remember we said we have 30 million adolescents so looking for a way to engage them in a productive way in programs youth initiative community-based programs then we find that that level of engagement is actually going to cushion them from future mental health issues <clears throat> um before i even go to 
you know the corrective measure, measures because one of the other things usually is um what is it that you can do and as as somebody who is really passionate about um youth and also as a head of digital it's not all doom it's not that um you're going to get a mental illness you're going to suffer poor mental health uh because of the exposure because of the stress that you're going through one of the things as a Chiromo hospital group that we've been able to do is a specifically cater for that demographic of course we acknowledge that people suffer more because they have no access you know to proper treatment so when you go to the website the Chiromo hospital group website you will find that we have brief screeners of course a lot of the youth we are all on the digital tools they are brief screeners if you're in this space and you've been asking yourself you know could i be depressed i'm not interested in what i used to be interested in i feel i don't feel motivated um, i'm having intrusive thoughts or even suicidal ideations and you're wondering you know could i be depressed or there's a brief screener that you can take these are not diagnostic tools just to help you understand in terms of severity where you are that's called the patient health questionnaire we also have the bex anxiety indexes there for those of you because i know this forum um, as a high-end uh, forum also has people who people who've been working for long because burnout is actually a real thing in fact burnout has been classified in the international classification of disease newest version 11 as a disease and as an individual as a psychologist who is also working in a hospital where um, focuses on physical health i can tell you a hundred percent usually people report here because of what we call hapanakule syndrome yeah it just basically means you know here and there so today headache tomorrow backache tomorrow stomachache um assessments are done um tests are done and guess what the tests are negative that's what burnout exactly is you're not sleeping your eating patterns have been um interrupted so you can also be able to do um a burnout assessment because the youth today the youth today are dying because of conditions that can actually be prevented or even um, better managed we have a lot more people who are suffering from um, hypertension type 2 diabetes all those are lifestyle diseases and they're also connected to stress so whereas in mental health we are seeing work as very important also burying yourself in it too much the extreme part of it will also um, render you to and just to to highlight, my apologies Gadoni, just to highlight i need to add you a minute um all right yes okay so also you can do e-consultations and there is also a toll free line that you can be able to call at no um, cost as well but at the end of the day self-care is key when we are talking about um, mental health and this is what we 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 look at when you look at the who um, definition of self-care basically just being able to manage yourself to be intentional without the support of a healthcare provider but contrary to popular belief self-care is not just one thing it's important for me to talk about that today it's not just because you went and did your hair or you went and slept in i want you to know that as an individual you are holistic in nature and unless you get to a point where you realize that you need to take care of all those aspects all those facets of your life then you're not engaging in self-care so these are the major um, areas of self-care physically what are you doing emotionally socially um spiritually your environment personal space financial of course and your work thank you so much um, for the opportunity this is a toll-free number down there 0800 220 000. please feel free to call in and talk to another professional on the other side liz over to you Thank you very much, Kazoni. I mean, I wish I could give you 10 more minutes, but uh, as I mentioned earlier on, I might be a bit selfish today. And, and I like all these items and, and, and these key points you've brought out. And it's okay not to be okay. You just need to know when you're not okay and you need to talk about it. And I think the youth is something that um, we have not communicated this well yet. Um, please, if you can just go back and share the program, that, that would be good. But I like the fact that you mentioned with youth right now, they're thinking about money for some reason. It's all about getting employed. And, and, and I'm hoping that the system that we have right now will just uh, go back to the slide for the program, please. 
um, which is the next slide. Thank you. And I'm hoping right now we'll, we'll be in a place where it's going to be more, you know, an open space. Let them know being self, you know, taking care of all of yourself. It's not being selfish. And it's okay to be a bit selfish as long as your mental health being in space is, is healthy. Um, so we'll go to a power minute and I'll just um, call out to E4 impact. If we do have a representative in the house, it will be good to use your power minutes just to give us your your thoughts around today's topic. Um, I just go to the slide that has the question so that the team can also know which questions we're pondering on today. Uh, so when you're actually talking about, when you're giving you your two minute thoughts, uh, it would be good if you can also kind of coil it around how partnerships support youth development in Africa and foster a sustainable ecosystem for entrepreneurship and innovation. So this is this is going to be the thought process. But if we can get something from e, someone from E4 Impact, please. Okay, thank you. I've just been highlighted that we do not have anyone yet. Uh, so once they're in, let me know. Um, let's just go back to the main program. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'll keep on doing this to you today. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, so I'll call upon uh, Margaret Mutiso. If you're in the room, you can just feel free to unmute and uh, make use of your power uh, power minute. Uh, do we Hi have everyone. Uh, yeah, this is uh, um, Sister Margaret Mutiso. Welcome. From Tangaza, from Tangaza University College, the Center for Leadership and Management. And uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that I was going to talk today. I, no just... worries. I might have to apologize. I'm literally throwing you under the bus. But the idea is for you to give your thoughts around uh, the discussions today. Um, of course, we're looking at how partnerships, innovation, creation, will help the youth. And we're trying to look at how we can foster an environment that helps them thrive and helps them kind of identify um, who they are. But this is through entrepreneurship and innovation. And, and it's because as, as uh, Gadoni mentioned, we, uh, um, the rate of, of unemployment is very high. And that's because even the government itself cannot give enough work to the youth. Um, so we're looking at innovations, we're looking at entrepreneurship and other avenues where we can support the youth. Um, having 1.8 billion uh, adolescents and youth in the country means a lot of challenges and opportunities. So this is just a two minute about your own thought process. It doesn't have to be, <laughs> it's just your own thought process on, on, on the discussions today. Okay, now maybe I can just say coming from an academic background, uh, especially from our Center for Leadership and Management, we have embraced a competence-based uh, methodology of teaching the young, the young people, which we borrowed from the DePaul University of Chicago, because when we were starting the Center for Leadership and Management, they are the first people we partnered with, and we offered uh, their liberal degree on leadership for around seven years. So we borrowed a lot from them on... Uh, using the method on competence-based uh, methodology. And uh, this means that as we are teaching the youth, we are not dwelling much on the theories uh, or cramming the things, but enabling them to grasp the skills and be able to have the capacity, even as they go on through their academics, they are able to do something with the skills that they are getting from the school. They are not waiting to finish school, so that they can be employed. So we have uh, some 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 courses like uh, we I teach a course on leadership and creativity. So by the end of this course, the the young people are able to come up with an an idea that is original for them. They can come up with an art factor or a product which they can use maybe even to sell in the market and get some money. So just an idea to trigger the eureka moment in them to be able to realize they have the potential. Okay. The exactly. only thing to ex need to explore and think deeper to realize what is it that I can do with what I have, not just sitting down and wait to be employed. 
Thank so I think much. if we had I much, know. if I had prepared earlier, I would have. No, 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 no. Don't worry. It's this is this is what we call it. We're calling it power minutes. We're just calling you, and we want to see what your thought process is. <laughs> so it's okay. literally throwing you under the bus. But thank you very much for that. And and I like the fact that you're bringing up the aspect of benchmarking as people who have the resources and are in a position where we can actually come up with solutions. We need to also figure out which organization, which country has a program that is really working for the youth and try and, you know, imitate or learn from them. And, and that's okay. Let's just go back to the, to, to Cup Youth Empowerment uh, Institute. Yashpal Tihag, if, if you're there, I don't want to butcher your name, but if you're there, please, your thought process, two minutes, starting now. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Liz. This is Yeshpal Sihag from Cap Youth Empowerment Institute. Um, about myself, uh, I'm a skill development expert, so invested my time and energy um, in last 17 years to learn about uh, um, uh, sustainable programming for uh, youth development, which includes the skill development on employability and entrepreneurship aspects. Um, we are engaged as an organization, Cap Youth Empowerment Institute is engaged in implementing various uh, skill training program for youth in Kenya. And uh, we have partnerships with various uh, bilateral organizations like uh, European Union, German uh, Development Corporation, MasterCard Foundations. And through them, we are able to reach out to a large number of young people. So far, we have reached around 100,000 of young people in last 10 years in Kenya. And our operations are based uh, on an aspect that uh, we build capacity of government institutions. And through them, uh, we ensure that young people, those who enroll in vocational training programs, uh, they are connected with the industries. So it is a program where we mobilize, train, develop curriculum, do market scan, identify opportunities, uh, deliver training programs, can um, develop life skills, digital skills among them, and uh, prepare them for work readiness. And at the end, we place them, finally connect them with the industry so that they can have their jobs. So it is um, something that um, uh, uh, it, it is a kind of model which is uh, working for young people and young people are benefiting from. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Liz. Thank you. And, and I appreciate that. And, and of course, um, as I mentioned, YIDP Kenya, we really are focused uh, on networking and creation of opportunities because what we realized is these opportunities do exist, but the youth themselves cannot access them. So we're also trying to have this kind of roundtable discussion so that we kind of pick out who has access to these opportunities and how we can connect them to the organizations that have youth uh, and the adolescents who are ready to also, you know, take up this kind of opportunities. But thank you very much for that. I like the fact that we have um, Poipel Mazda, uh, Saif, uh, Islam, if you're here, um, do unmute yourself and just give us your two minutes um, thought process on this. Um, I'm not so sure if Saif is here though, um, just let me know. Uh, but in the meantime, Joseph Mwangi, please just unmute yourself. Uh, let me know which organization you're from and uh, what your thought process is. Yeah, thank you very much. I believe you can hear me clearly. Loud and clear. Yes, um, my name is Joseph Mwangi Chege. I'm the managing director at Profitable Hospitality Kenya. We are a consultancy company based here in Nairobi and covering all East Africa. That is uh, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and DRC. Uh, what we do is a uh, hotel consultancy. We only deal with hotel establishments, startup of hotels, feasibility studies, business plans, um, operational assessment, as well as uh, op hotel operating softwares. Uh, my input actually would be actually for the youth. And uh, as you have mentioned some few minutes ago, the opportunities are there, only that they are not available for the youth to be able to access them. So the networking is really what is critical for the youth. 
whereby they'll come on sessions and they'll be able to know who can finance a new startup, uh, who can be able, who is already doing actually what they are learning right now in school if they are students, or if they have already graduated, who can really be able to assist them in line with uh, their profession. I believe uh, also for the youth, I would also like to challenge the youth uh, to encourage them to at least, uh, if it would be possible to move away from the mindset of uh, employment. Because we have, uh, we, have had, uh, we have had a cycle whereby students have been taught, uh, basically number one, to pass exams. And then after that is get employed. We have not really focused on the uh, self-employment perspective. What do I mean? Um, if you have done a management, a management course, volunteership is something that also can help you advance and get into the industry. You can volunteer for any company. You can choose a company and uh, give an option of volunteering, working without pay. And believe you me, in any company that you'll give that option, definitely they will be able to complement your work. If they see you're dedicated, of course, definitely they'll be able to complement and uh, maybe give you something small. So I think what uh, we can focus on as uh, corporates and uh, companies that are existing right now is uh, to be able to do more of this networking to help the youth be able to identify who can really assist them to start up. If we are telling them they need to uh, think about self-employment, who are these people that can finance their projects? Who are these that are already doing what they have learned? So we really need to focus more on the networking aspect for different corporate companies. For us as profitable hospitality Kenya, we have been able actually to uh, assist quite a number of youths in terms of getting to hotels, uh, starting small restaurants, starting cafes, you know, showing them where they can be able to access uh, funding, uh, developing good business plans, developing a feasibility study. We have been actually doing that uh, pro bono for the youth. Mm -hmm. And actually, we have uh, been able to assist quite a number of youth startup uh, start these what we call outside catering companies. So I believe if corporate companies can be able to approach this perspective, definitely we'll be able to employ quite a number of uh, youth. They will uh, because when one youth is empowered, of course they'll employ two, three, four, or even ten of yes. other youth, and we'll be able now to move towards. Uh, reducing the number of uh, unemployed youth. That, that, is, that is well said. Thank you, Joseph. And of course, please stay on the line because I already have picked two or three more questions that I would want to direct to you during the, the open forum uh, bit. So don't get off the, the call. Thank you very much for that insight. And, and I like the fact that you're bringing the East African perspective. And, and what, what has come out clearly is that youth, especially during the adolescent phase, it's a very crucial phrase where they need to be guided. And that's where they make a lot of mistake if nobody is guiding them. And I like the fact you're bringing in this aspect of, of you've, what, you've used the keyword I was looking for, which is pro bono. And nowadays when you're going into the employment sector, you're being asked about experience and they're forgetting there's a youth that just from school. So the experience really does not apply. But when they know that they can do pro bono activities to get the experience from organization so that when they're getting ready for employment, they also have, the papers and the experience. So that keyword was what I was looking for through the discussion. So thank you very much for bringing it up. I will just go to, um, I know we were supposed to have DTB Africa um, present on the call. Collins, you can just let me know if they're here and, uh, and they can actually just unmute. Just give me a nod Collins, if we do have somebody from DTB Africa, DTB Africa. Um, not so sure. Okay, uh, maybe not yet. Um, we'll just go directly to the next um, keynote presentation, and I'm super excited about this because this this is a uh, Ecobana is a good example of what the youth are capable of, especially when they're given a conducive environment for them to thrive and start thinking outside the box. Um, so I'll call out to Lennox Omunde, who's the founder and CEO. 
um, of Ekubana. And I, it would be good if you give us just a bit of background about Ekubana and the idea, and also do not feel shy by showing off the recent progress and 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 uh, staunch um, you know nominations that you got. Uh, so if Lennox, you're here, um, you can just unmute. Um, can we go to the slide where we have Lennox photo so that we can also see his face? I'm pretty sure we had him on the slides. Um, Lennox is somewhere in one of those slides. I'm sure I saw him. But Lennox, I think I saw you at the beginning, right? Um, yeah, I'm still here. Yes, please. Still here. Perfect. Over to you. Right. Um, thank you so much for having me today. My name is Lennox Omonde. I'm the founder and chief executive officer of Ecobana Limited, which is uh, a social enterprise that manufactures biodegradable sanitary towels using banana fibers. So we combine two concepts of uh, green and circular economy and design thinking techniques to skillfully craft the sustainable product to meet the ends of environmental responsibility and social accountability in developing this company and this business. So I'm here today and I'm very much more excited and delighted to hear the conversations. And uh, today I want to discuss the role of partnerships in supporting youth developments in Africa and even fostering sustainable economic uh, ecosystem for entrepreneurship and innovation. And specifically, I will be discussing the challenges we face as uh, SMEs, the small medium-sized enterprises, and why is it helpful for us as SMEs and even other SMEs to partner with the public institutions, the benefits and in investing in uh, SMEs to create job opportunities. So we'll start with the challenges that most of us face as, as small, medium-sized enterprises. SMEs are even a backbone of many African economies, yet we face numerous challenges that hinder our growth and development. But these numerous challenges include limited access to financing, lack of market information, inadequate infrastructure, and limited access to business networks and even mentorships, as uh, somebody has already mentioned in the call. And in Kenya, for example, SMEs account for around 80% of all jobs and contribute about 34% of the country's GDP. However, as even more, we face these significant challenges with 50% of small businesses failing, in this, uh, failing within their first year, maybe due to lack of financing or inadequate business skills. So I think personally, this is where partnerships can play uh, a critical role in supporting youth developments in Africa, because partnerships between private sector players, even public um, institutions and international organizations can provide SMEs with access to funding, financing, training, and mentorship programs. It can also provide access to markets, technology transfer, and business networks that can help them grow their business. For example, here in Kenya, um, the, the government has tried to set up programs that can support SMEs so that they can pivot and even make sure that the business grows. Uh, some of the, the, the programs or the various ways the government has tried to uh, support the SMEs include the Youth Enterprise Development Fund, which provides uh, financing and even training to young entrepreneurs while in Kenya. And uh, one that is most famously known as KIRDI, which is the Kenya Industrial Research and Development Institute, where personally, when I was uh, starting out with Ecobana Limited, I went to Kiridi and even learned from step one where I want to prototype to make my MVP, to do more research about my product, about the business environment that I want to get into, to know more about the market and even how I was going to pivot as an entrepreneur to get more funding. So these institutions that the government has set up and even they partner with international organizations such as the World Bank and even the African Development Bank to provide financing for uh, technical assistance to SMEs. So part partnerships with the public institutions are particularly helpful for uh, SMEs because they provide access to government contracts and tenders, which can also be a significant source of revenue for SMEs. They can also provide, they can also help SMEs to navigate regulatory and uh, legal frameworks, which can be challenging for young entrepreneurs 
who are just starting. And we often have uh, this, a lot of questions about people who innovate because as you innovate about a new idea or as you harness a new technology to fit into the market gap, people often ask questions about how, how, how are you re registering your business? How are you making sure that you are still the sole owner that and you own 100% of your business? So these are, these are some of the these are some of the questions that you can help answer when SMEs navigate regulatory and even legal frameworks, which are which can be done through partnerships. And investing in SMEs is also critical for creating job opportunities and fostering sustainable ecosystem for entrepreneurs and innovation. Because SMEs are the large are the largest employers in many African countries, and I think nowadays people are moving from just an SME to a social entrepreneurship. Because in social entrepreneurship, you can, there's, there's this slogan that social entrepreneurs have that we have a heart for the world and a mind for the business. Meaning as we innovate, as we solve social problems, we are still making sure that we have a positive and a greater impact in the community or in the entire world as a whole. So SME are the largest employers in many African countries and investing in them could create and boost economic growth. And for, for example, I'll talk about um, two, I'll talk about three organizations that uh, personally I have uh, gotten funding and even helped to catapult our idea and even my mission of ending period poverty even further. For example, in Nigeria, the Tony Lumelo Foundation Entrepreneurship Program provides 5,000 in seed funding to a thousand entrepreneurs each year in all the 54 countries in Africa. So this is a program that basically provides training, mentorship, and even networking opportunities to help entrepreneurs grow their businesses. And since its inception in um, 2015, the program has supported over 9,000 entrepreneurs in 54 African countries, creating over 200,000 jobs. So there's a call to action each and every year that entrepreneurs are there to. When you, you, you apply, you submit your idea, you submit, if you've not made any revenues, it's still okay because the main reason why uh, the foundation gives 5,000 in city funding is for entrepreneurs to pivot, to make sure that they move the idea to the next steps. So they don't give you just $5,000 funding, for you to spend, but you're being guided on how you're going to spend that million, uh, that $5,000 funding, sorry. And the second one is in here in Kenya, the Kenya Climate Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center. It is located in Strathmore University. It, it, um, it has a lot of variety of ways they fund entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, be it uh, ag agri-tech entrepreneurs, be it health tech entrepreneurs, fintech entrepreneurs, they have, they have a business incubation program where an entrepreneur goes for it, uh, it around it goes for around um, around one month, but it's basically four weeks. Then one month of market validation, uh, market research validation, and even social mapping of the area to which you're going to set up your business, your company, or just your solution is going to work in. And at the end of the day, you are going to get funding of a certain amount comparing to, going to compare, the amount you're going to get compares to what you are able to do as a business or how big is that the impact you're going to create. And the last one that, uh, the recent one that uh, we got uh, as a team was the Hard Point. So the Hard Point is a worldwide organization, a non-profit organization sponsored by uh, a Swedish billionaire where university students all over the world are called and tackled to you know, solve one of the world's most pressing problems using and being guided by a team. So last year, we competed at a team known as Bring the World Back to Work by being able to demonstrate that the company that you are building and even the problem you're solving not only has impact, it does not only generate revenues and has profit, but the company is able to, to demonstrate that with a million dollar funding, they're able to create 2,000 job opportunities in the future. So we competed from January to around September. And uh, from January, you were around 15,000 teams that were selected to move to the regionals. And uh, after competing there until we were now only six teams, only 28 teams, 
you are taken to Boston, to MIT, to continue to do more research and to validate as to why do we need to win a million US dollars? Are we the best company in uh, the world to demonstrate that not only have we made the call to action, but we are solving one of the world's most uh, pressing problems. And as a company, our business plan is more critical and it's more uh, in a way that we're going to create 2000 jobs by 2024. So we competed, uh, shortlisted, we got shortlisted to top six and uh, we made to pitch in New York at the Clinton Global Initiative. And at the end of the day, after pitching in a four minute pitch, we had only four minutes to make our case as to why Eco Banner Limited Company was a company worth a million US dollars and was a company worth creating 2,000 job opportunities by 2025. So after the four minute pitch, um, when the 42nd president of the US, uh, Bill Clinton, was now announcing the winners and we are announced as the winners of the $1 million prize, it, it, it is it is a way that we are reflecting on how partnerships and even on how networking opportunities can help entrepreneurs to pivot and get funding and even scale their businesses and start a company while still in university or after graduating and so and so. So those are some of the examples that I, I, I had highlighted as to the main reasons why we need to foster partnerships and we also need to foster in um, lot of funding opportunities and even get the word out there that even though there might be funding, you're not going to get funding today, you're not going to get funding tomorrow because there are steps that you need to go through as an entrepreneur and even as an, um, a small, if you have a small medium sized enterprise to go through some validations, to go through some of the audits before you get some of these fundings that uh, we really need as entrepreneurs to pivot. So. I'll say again that partnerships play a critical role in supporting youth development in Africa and even fostering sustainable, a sustainable ecosystem for entrepreneurship and innovation. Because even though we face numerous challenges as SMEs, which I really highlighted, like including a limited access to financing business networks, but partnerships with public institutions and even private sector players can help to address these challenges. And investing in these SMEs also plays a critical role in creating more job opportunities, boosting economic growth, and even solving some of our own problems using our own solutions that we have harnessed as entrepreneurs. And so that is what I had, uh, I had organized for today to talk about why do we need to foster, uh, so, um, why do we need to foster partnerships and why do we need to work together with people why do we need to keep on um, seeking out for the solutions and even for answers for things that we were doing? And where can we get some of them, some of this knowledge? But, um, before I finish, I want to talk about Africa Youth for SDGs because I'm seeing it was highlighted when I was named as a top innovator. It is because I, I learned that the, the world is rapidly growing and changing to where limited to where access to such a, some some of the you know so some of the basic needs and even basic commodities such as access to menstrual hygiene such as food and even healthcare are very limited. So I took a chance to learn how I could innovate and even how I could um, use my innovation to address uh, some of the seventeen sustainable development goals. I I, I didn't have to. Um, to align my innovation with all the all of the 17 because I couldn't do that. But I picked to which SDGs will I be able to address. And I realized that when I was presenting some of my solutions to some of the companies, to some of the organizations, some of the real questions and the key questions that they were asking is that what well which SDG is, is, is your solution um tackling or solving? Because I, we had a lot of people competing, but when it comes to sustainable development goals, they say they've never heard of such a thing. Maybe they don't know, or maybe they know, but they don't know how to attach their solution to the sustainable development goals. So the, 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 these are some of them recurring and some of the new ways into which people are looking before they give funding opportunities to, to, to people. And Africa for SDGs is located in Westlands in Nairobi, and they give 
a 17 day a 17 day training on 17 sustainable development goals so day one is, is goal number one day two is goal number two until goal number 17. then at the end of the day fellows are given an exam it's like it's not an exam like a high school exam or university exam it's just an exam to go out there and do an action at home program to tackle either one or two SDGs and align that SDG to your innovation so that it can help you to catapult and even grow your business even further. And with that, I, will, I was also honored to be named the UN Volunteer of the Year Award last year and also to be nominated for top 30 and 30 young CEOs in Africa. So that has been my journey and I'm very much delighted to be with you guys here today. And if there might be any question, I'm, yes, I can ask. Yes. I'm sure that. Yes, definitely. I'm sure there's going to be like some comments or questions. So do not drop off. And thank you very much. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, when I was saying do not be modest, but you're very modest about the achievement. This is big. This is something that also put the country in the limelight. Um, so it was it, it was just amazing just hearing from you um, on, on this. Um, I am not so sure whether um, Saiful is in. Um, not so sure if he's in. Can you counter check, uh, Collins? If not, we can just go to the, the question itself and make it an open forum. Just double check. Um, I, don't, I don't think he's in. I'm trying to look at it. Yes. Okay. So you'll give us a heads up when he comes in. He was going to be the last keynote speaker before we open the forum for discussions, but we'll just dive into it. We can go to the slide where we had the question and have an open discussion. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, this is all for the youth. And uh, I was hoping to also hear during the discussions that we need to have the youth at the table when we're having all this commitments being signed um, on behalf of the youth and we need to bring them at the forefront. And I like what Echo Ban has also brought out. Key information, we need to have youth who know what is going on um, across the globe and in the country itself. Uh, when we're talking about climate change, when we're talking about sustainable development goals, it has been a top-notch um, white collar kind of a discussion and we've been leaving them out and the key role, the numbers that they have, the key role that they play is very big. Uh, we need to have them in these discussions. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to open the forum for uh, any questions, any comments. And Gadoni, I'm just going to throw it out to you um, because you we spoke about uh, mental health and we need people to hold the youth hand. Uh, if you could just come back in and just let us know, is this is there a way that a Chiromo can support in terms of, I've seen the toll free, we need to advertise that more often so that they know they can just call, but is there some sort of a mentorship program that Chiromo is giving out that they can take advantage of? And that same question, would go to Ecobana. That you you've been selected as you thirty under thirty. Uh, you've been recognized, and this health prize was a very big win, not only for you but also for the country itself. Is do you have some sort of a mentorship program now in place? And I know you you owe us two thousand job opportunities. Yes, so we are going to hold you accountable for that. So get only fast to you, and then we can go to to Lennox on that. I'm, I'm hoping we didn't lose Gadoni during the discussions. We might have. So Lennox, over to you. All right. Um, so after after you know getting the funding to start the, now the company and build this new manufacturing facility to be able to now not owe you guys uh, two thousand job opportunities. So. What, what I did with my team was to create a model where we are able not only now to create direct job opportunities by also, and also indirect job opportunities. So at the moment, we are building a new manufacturing facility in KC, but we have other programs that we are working with. We are, work, we are collaborating with, uh, for example, the USAID, the Western Kenya Sanitation and uh, the Western Kenya Sanitation Project to make sure that if we build the company in Kisi, which is in Western Kenya, we are not only able to provide menstrual products to Western Kenyan communities, but we're also able to provide menstrual products to the whole of Kenya. And through this, we have a CSR program where we train um, 
both men and women ways on in which they can um they can include men in the discussions of menstrual hygiene and even menstrual hygiene management because we realized when we we're doing our social mapping that there are still areas in Kenya, there are still communities where menstrual hygiene is still considered as a taboo. And there are some of the there are some of the norms that and traditions that are still attached to these things that are they are, they are needy that we really need to get rid of. So that is some of, one of the things that we do. We train university students on how they can best approach um, men in communities and even churches. And some of the things that we also do as a, as a top fellow for Africa Youth for SDGs, the programs that now uh, we run, uh, that I help the organization run as uh, a top fellow is identify youths and even students in universities that can be trained on sustainable development goals. And after being trained on sustainable development goals, these youths, we are going to task them with something we call an action at home program. So we have three action at home programs that youth can choose. One is an agile program. An agile program is where we train you on sustainable de development goals. Then you go to, the, to high school, to high school students, and you develop a business concept with them where you train now these high schoolers on ways they can innovate. And basically, it's, it's, it's well known in Kenya as Science Congress. So what we do with Science Congress is that we don't want those ideas to die in those schools. We want the ideas, even after the schools, they can still continue with the ideas. So we train them to have really scalable and sustainable ideas in their, in, in their high schools. So once they come out, we continue with them in the program and innovate to them uh, expose them to crowdfunding, to funding opportunities, to other organizations where they can learn and even yeah. get more funding. Another, another program is uh, alongside us. So for alongside us, it targets students and even kids uh, from 11 years old to 17 years old, maybe still in primary mostly, and they're just being taught about um, kids for sustainable development goals. They have their targets and indicators that we teach them on and also just social responsibility and environmental accountability. And um, for, for the UN, uh, it's just a lot of volunteerism. We just teach about how, how, can, how can you volunteer to learn a skill and how can you volunteer to network? Because if you tell somebody today that uh, you're going to volunteer without pay, you're in campus, Okay, we must admit, first of all, it's difficult to just volunteer, but do you have the heart to volunteer? That's what I said. We have a heart for the world and a mind for the business. As yes, much as yes. you're volunteering, yeah. yes, as so, much as you're volunteering, you know that at the end of the day, there's something that you're going to get other than just being trained. You're going to gain experience, you're going to work with people, and you're going to get referrals that can push you further to, um, to heights that you can't even imagine. So those are some of the things that we do. Those are some of the programs that I champion for and I- um, Well, thank you very much for, for highlighting to... that, Lennox. And, and I like the fact that you already have so many things in place um, that are also going to be beneficial to the youth. Uh, we only have 24 minutes, I'm being told, before we wrap up. And this is the part where I randomly select somebody uh, from the, the uh, participant um, list and you have to, our sisters come out with an answer for this question but i've seen a pretty amazing comment we've been talking about funding the whole time uh, but reinders uh, if you can i know i think you're on the road or something if you can just unmute give me your insight i like the comment you've made and i really wanted you to just give it more meat in terms of funding um uh, rain reinders i know you're on mute I don't know whether you can hear me. Yes, are you getting me? Perfect, now it's better. Over to okay. you. Okay, I unmuted. Okay, yes, I uh, posted a comment uh, about the uh, funding. Mm -hmm. uh, the cause of everything is of course that we uh, um, are walking behind interest, which is asked about funding uh, and we talk about the value, the assets, the resources, they are not connected anymore to the, uh, to the money supply. Mm -hmm. So that means that if we uh, create money, 
uh, as the banks are doing, creating money in a kind of way in the world, um, and you ask interest, yes, then how can you with labor walk behind interest if there is created, for example, $100, yes, and you put it in the economy, yes, and you say, I want half back uh, 120. Now, where does the 20 come from? True. As long, I, I see, that's, I the pro, that's the main problem. The, 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 the red line between poor and wealth mm -hmm. over more than a thousand years have never gone down. Never. It's always going up. And that means and, that because, be, uh -huh. okay, yes, you can ask. Yeah, yeah. And, and I completely agree with you because I've just seen a hand go up. I've completely agreed with you, Eurendis. And this is this is also a challenge we're facing, not only in the country. When we say we have opportunities for the youth and we have funding that they can access, there's always a catch where they need to bring back an interest. And these are people who are literally just starting off um, an innovative idea, uh, starting off an SME. So I there is that percentage I need to go back that uh, we need to kind of discuss that again. I know I've been told that Doni has logged off. Um, so we're going to go to Biljana. Biljana, if you're there, uh, what are your thoughts around this question and how partnerships um, can support your development in the continent? Not too sure whether Biljana is there. Um, is it possible for me to add a little bit to this, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, to yes, this, yes. Um, what I wrote? Yes. So if you if you take the youth as a as as a as a center of skills, so they all have a value. Every youth has a value. They can do something. They can labor something. They make something. So they create value. So funding should be connected to what they make. So that's the reason why I think that if you are fund don't ask money back like interest, but ask a share of their productivity back. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you are a farmer and you put some, and you make a, 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 an, a you, you have apples, for example, and you wanna build a farm with uh, apple trees and just uh, good quality, et cetera, et cetera. And someone is funding that so that you can buy a seed and you can buy a, a plot of land then ask back some product share. So that means that if you are in the neighborhood, or for example, you can say I fund and uh, uh, 10 families around this farm receive back, for example, if you are a philanthropist, so if you have money enough and you will fund because you are for the youth, you are against poverty, you want to give everybody uh, uh, possibilities and you are really, uh, um, uh, touched by the bad situations of many children in the world and you have money, then just put your sh product share, what this person is making. For example, give 10 families 1% of the funding, let's say, uh, uh, say 100,000 uh, euro or dollar, take 1% or 5%, do it not in interest, don't ask back money, but for example, give 10 families around this form the possibility to receive a share if you i hope you understand what i mean i i understand and i'm going to bring back yashpal because yashpal during your presentation um uh, and your comments you mentioned something around opportunities and and there are funding opportunities where they put in money but they do take a, a, like equity share of 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 your innovation which is that's that's also an opportunity instead of asking back for a 20 percent profit so yashpal any insights on this i'm hoping yashpal is also there Not so sure. Um, okay, so I'll go back to Joseph Mongi, and we were talking about opportunities across the East African with the with the work that you do. When we're talking about opportunities, how can the youth tap into this? Because you you'll find that opportunities are just in the what do you call it, Joseph? The opportunities are always in boardrooms or in meetings, and when we're networking, but the youth are not there. So how do we get these opportunities out to them? 
Well, um, I think uh, the best way would be is company to company uh, policy. If the company employs youth, of course, it will be good at least to have uh, them uh, when you're doing these, uh, you know, agreements being signed business to business. The other option, as I had mentioned, was to at least uh, do more of these uh, networking sessions. Networking sessions. And of course, networking sessions that uh, actually do not charge those high fees because uh, this this our Nairobi here. Uh, when we talk about networking sessions, uh, the fees that are put there, I don't think there's any, you know, upcoming uh, entrepreneur will be able to afford. You know, you will see 20,000, 30,000. Some of these people who have graduated from school, they will not be able to afford that. So these are some of the things that uh, we really need to uh, focus on and uh, see how well we can be able to have different companies come together, maybe even on pro bono, be able to provide guidance, do this networking, you know, give these speeches and guide the, uh, guide the youth uh, on the same. So I think this is one of the things. And I think that is where mostly we really need to focus on pro bono, networking, and how we can get uh, these uh, new entrepreneurs who want to, because I've seen quite a number of um, new graduates who really have that, uh, they're really eager and they want to get into business. They're not even looking at uh, employment, but now how they get there and even getting in that office to that CEO or MD is a really big challenge. So if we are able to do more of these networking sessions, Mm -hmm. uh, pro bono, we don't charge these fees. These fees can be carried by people like now us who have been in the industry for the last 10 years, yeah. 15 yeah. years, 20 years. We can be able to sponsor some of these small events, encourage the students to come on board, uh, guide them. And the ones that we see, we can even have small competitions whereby we can pick the best out of the groups that we can be holding. And we can even absorb them, give them guidance. And when you release them, even after six months or even five months, these people are able to go and start something on their own. On their own, for sure. And of course, we need to also now develop something else, uh, which is uh, the fear of competition, because that's another thing also. <laughs> You're afraid of building somebody and then uh, they start uh, having a piece of your cake. So I think um, with a little bit of each, we'll be able to help this youth uh, be able to develop and, and, and uh, come I, up with something I, great. I can see that the Margaret is already in agreement with you. Um, I don't know whether Kashinda or um, Lily, you're on the call just to have, just to also hear your voice uh, and make sure that we're not having like a robot situation, you know, with technology, you never know who's on the other side. Um, but you can feel free to just um, unmute or raise your electronic hand. But thank you very much, Joseph, for that. I totally understand. Um, and I agree 100%. We need to create these opportunities for them. Uh, but we should not peg it to a registration fee for a networking session. And, and those are literally ongoing um, around the, the corporate sector, which is not also helping uh, because we're denying, denying them those opportunities. Um, so I don't know whether Lily you'd want to chime in or Akiko, uh, but Margaret completely agrees with your sentiments. Um, and it's all about collaboration. Um, um, so Margaret is saying very well, say Joseph, we're also open to hold career days in collaboration with interested companies at Tengaza University in an effort to expose our students. And I like that. And I like what universities are doing. And, and this career days, um, I'm thinking universities need to tap into, into high schools and just have that chain of when they're kind of thinking about what they want to do, because the youth as we say, we're looking at 10 to 25 here. So that means you find them in high schools, you even find them in primary schools and, and, and you, you have to find them in the university. So there has to be like a clear communication chain. If it's mentorship, which is what I was, I wanted Shiromo to look into, these are, these are opportunities that are out there. And Lennox, maybe you can also give a bit of insight of um, uh, mentorship opportunities. I do know uh, people like organizations like MasterCard in partnership with other organizations have that baobab set up where you can mentor or you can be mentored. But how do we know what is out there that is good for the youth and we can actually move them to that particular direction if you if you would like to just chime in a bit. Right. Um it's it's good that you mentioned Baobab because I, I I also failed to get into Baobab last year. But now um so the information is out there and for a lot of uh, 
internship, but um, mostly the, the the mentorship opportunities for business incubation, if, even for le leadership development. I've used uh, three platforms because social media is now a tool that is really helping people to grow their skills and even advance. So I've used three platforms. One of my favorite platforms is LinkedIn. So I've connected with a lot of people from LinkedIn and it has helped me really, really to grow and even to apply to some of these amazing opportunities. So in, when you have an account on, on LinkedIn, you can easily get uh, opportunities. In LinkedIn, we have a page called Opportunities for Africans. So you can see of uh, to how many, up to how many uh, eight years in terms of age that are required for that opportunity, and even to up to what number of people are required. So the opportunities for Africans, mostly even in Kenya, uh, for example, like right now we have a uh, call to applications for yearly cohort 52, 53, and 54. So for somebody who wants to start their leadership, uh, and they want to build that boundary, that foundation for le for leadership. This is one of the ways to start by applying to Yale. After going to Yale, you, you already have that uh, le leadership background you, where you can now, and you're able to lead you know, not only an organization, but you can lead and even uh, spearhead some of the institutional uh, programs that are in an institution or even in your community. And through things that we do as youths, through the programs that we get into, we can be able to make uh, connections that uh, are more going to be more helpful in the long run as we champion for some of the problems that we solve, some of the things that we tackle, and even the change that we want to bring to bring a positive impact in our communities. So I've used LinkedIn, I've used, um, I think I've used also Twitter, for, for my climate activism, I've used mostly Twitter to connect and foster global corporations and even in, uh, to inspire my peers to take action and also to make a commitment as to why they really need to champion for climate activism and also some of the problems that we are solving. So taking commitments, um, you make a commitment that in 10 days or in a month, this is what I want to achieve personally as a global leader or as a student leader or as a group leader. And by taking this commitment, you inspire others who are seeing you doing what you do, despite of, you know, you, you might wake up today feeling like, I don't want to do it, but you have to do it because if you don't do it today, who will do it? So by doing things that we do, taking actions yeah. together, taking commitments, making sure that if nobody does it, then we do it to us, by us and for us. So there are some of the ways you can foster and bring collaborations yeah. inspire many people. Exactly. And there are a lot of opportunities, not only like Baobab, we just need to direct the youth where to find them. So if you're in on this program and you'd like to know how to join Baobab, just reach out. We can direct you on that because I'm a mentor. <laughs> I'm actually a mentor on Baobab and I, I, I find it very interesting. Um, okay, so we have 10 minutes to go and I need to use the first three just to summarize our discussions today which as we mentioned this is more of a teaser that is going to drive us to the next upcoming YDP conference that's going to happen in August and I will call out to Collins to just give the exact dates um, on this I don't know whether we have a slide on it but um, we can have an exact date on this and then we can let the um, participants also know how to go about registering and where the venue is going to be etc um, but in the meantime, just to summarize the discussions, which have been pretty much intense. Yes, thank you very much <laughs> for that particular slide. Uh, we've looked at how we need to tackle the youth uh, from a holistic, and that's why we started with Gadoni, um, just giving us a more health perspective that we need to have an holistic youth when we're trying to address the issues. And we've looked at um, a lot of opportunities that exist, but a lot of challenges that face the youth already, given the amount of the huge number that we have, not only in the continent, but also in Kenya. And we have like 13 million youth, and this is 10 to 19 years. And that means all the solutions that we have for them needs to be co-curated and tailor-made in such a way it addresses the current youth, not the youth in the 1980s. This is a whole different lot. These are technically um, savvy youth, and these are people who are thinking outside the box. We just need to coil it in such a way that 
when we're putting funding um, as Rainda brought in, let's look at not looking for profit out of it, but giving funding to the youth in such a way that they grow their business and the ideas that we have. And of course, we've discussed and a, a lot of key terms that keep on coming out is we need to invest in the youth. Um, and we need to create more job opportunities. And as Lennox brought it out, if we do pump in money into the SME sector, it's guaranteed job because they're going to you know, employ other people. So that also creates job opportunities. And we need to talk about partnerships, but we also need to have the youth at the same table. There's opportunities that exist. We need to let them know that these are available for them. Um, and of course, we always come back to mentorship as something that we really need to look into when we're talking about the youth and the adolescents, uh, especially within the country. Um, so the youth convention is going to happen in Nairobi, Kenya. We're very excited about this. Um, we have a partnership with Tangaza University College and uh, we want you to register. I mean, it's going to be a two day impactful event. We're all, we're going to look at different aspects as at the beginning, we had an introduction on the key areas that YIDP Kenya focuses on from ICT to health, uh, to sports, ETC. So it's going to be a more holistic convention and this is going to be youth owned. So we're going to have a lot of youth um, speaking and attending and we're going to have a lot of youth put out their own thoughts. Um, and their own recommendations on this. Um, just looking at the input, yes. Yes, exactly. Emphasis on the value and skills that, that they have. Thank you very much, Rainda, for emphasizing on that. Uh, please, next slide. Uh, and of course, this is curated by YDP uh, in partnerships with Tangaza University. So thank you very much, Tangaza University. I need to uh, kind of give out that shout out. That's what the youth do, do shout outs. Um, and we have a run for mental and physical health. Uh, this is going to be October 7th. And this is after the discussion we had in the PowerPoint slides that were presented by Gadoni. You've seen how youth, as much as we think they have their their life and their thoughts in together a lot of people don't not only the youth also so it's good for them to speak out and also good for them to seek help i mean there's a toll free a number that gadonia shared which we're going to circulate that one also across our, our networks where we, they can just call in if they're feeling like they're not in the right space um and at this day and age honestly we've seen a lot of suicides going on uh, a lot of matters being committed because somebody's not in the right space and as i mentioned earlier on the adolescent face the youth face this is where they go through a lot of changes and that needs guidance. So we're also going to have this run for mental and physical health. Um, venue is Nairobi, of course, we're going to communicate this as we near the dates. And in case of any partnership opportunities, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to bring in um, partnerships in, in whatever form. If you want to come speak, if you want to come mentor, if you want to come moderate a session, we're more than happy to jump into a call with you and you can reach out to be kind, uh, uh, be kind to your mind at yadpk.org for the running. And you can reach out to Collins. I am hoping you've typed in an email address that we can use um, when, we, when we actually want to register for the event itself. So Collins, I'll just stop there. We have five minutes, which I was supposed to reserve for you um, for the call to action and any other business. So over to you, Collins. I'm hoping you're the one who's doing the closing. <laughs> thank, thank you, Liz, for that. Uh, Robinson uh, will be taking charge of that. Uh, Perfect. So over Perfect. to you, Robinson. Perfect. Robinson, over to you. Thank you very much, Liz, and thanks to everyone who has who attended this. It has been a very insightful one, and I think we've learned a lot. And one of the key things coming up, coming out from this, uh, is that uh, we have so much potential, but lies a challenge that we need to see. So that is why in YIDP, uh, as in we live in a world where young people are facing uh, un unprecedented challenges. The YIDP is on a mission to lead the charge for public-private collaboration that open up opportunity for underprivileged privileged youths to enter, to enter the labor market. Now, our commitment as YIDP is to fight inequality and build sustainable, healthy, communities are the core of everything we do. But we need, for this to happen, we need your help for those here to make it happen. So as, as YIDP,
We are requesting you to join forces with us today and let's create a, a brighter, more equitable future for all our young people. Thank you all for those who've attended and we really do appreciate it. It has been a very insightful uh, session and a lot of, a lot of learning lesson, lessons have been picked up. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much. We appreciate this. And uh, well, three minutes into the call, we have three more minutes. <laughs> But thank you for um, joining. Uh, I think uh, the three minutes I would give a wrap up. I would give Collins to give a wrap up of the. Please event. do yes, Collins. I was wondering when I'm going to see your face again. So Collins, over <laughs> to you. Wrap up and close off the minute. There God, you are. I thought I'll be behind behind working on some technical. <laughs> but thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, it's really wonderful. Uh, we are grateful for this session, and uh, like uh, Robinson has said. Um, we are calling out uh, different stakeholders to walk this journey with us so that we are able to build a sustainable, healthy community for the youth in Africa. So like you all know the challenges that youth are facing today in Kenya, in Uganda, in Somalia, they are the same challenges. So if we embrace partnership and work together with the, uh, uh, both public and private institutions, we'll be able to do uh, more. So let me wrap up. Uh, I'll just uh, thank you, uh, everyone, every institution uh, which have taken their time to come and share insights and also learn uh, of what we are doing. We really appreciate your time. And uh, when we knock your door, uh, please uh, open doors for us. And we are ready to uh, touch out and transform the lives of youth across Africa. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. Have a great one all. And happy holiday for Kenyans. Yes. <laughs>